Okay. So we're gonna try to wrap up recursion, at least you know the basic concepts of recursion, and then of course we're gonna we're going to see it again as we uh, talk about other topics like dictionaries and later on when we talk about uh, complexive algorithms, etc. All right. So we did a lot of exercises. Uh, you know, recursive for recursive functions, so writing recursive functions to solve a problem by defining a base case and a recursive step. Yeah. The last example we looked at uh, on Wednesday was this palindrome. We've already written a, an iterative function or an iterative algorithm to uh, state whether a given string is palindrome or not. Meaning what? Meaning whether it, you know, it can be read from right to left, the same as from left to right. And you guys gave me a lot of good examples the last time. So close, like Madame or Abba. Yeah, all, all these sorts of examples. Let's try to, you know, uh, take Madame as an example. Okay, what is, yeah, annotate. Why is not annotating? Mm -hmm. Okay. Madame, right? Okay. Excellent. So madame is obviously a palindrome because you can read it from right to left, the same as left to right. So how do I think about this recursively? We started talking about this the last time. If you give me a string like madame, I could do the following to solve it recursively. I look at the first letter of the string and the last letter, okay? If they are the same, great, then you know I've solved one part of the problem. You know, so basically, if this is M and this is M, all I have to do is decide whether this is a palindrome or not. That's another string. You know, I can pass it, you know, to the uh, to the function again recursively and solve the problem on this. Okay. If you know, I give it another like sun, for instance, as another string as input. As soon as it sees that the first letter and the last letter of any string that is given in any recursive call are not the same, then it stops and returns false because sun is not a palindrome. Okay, so that's really the intuition. I'm gonna look at my string, check the first and last letter, and then solve the same problem on a smaller input, which is the substring starting from the second letter till the end before one. Okay, and then the substring will also be, you know, I check the first letter of this, you know, so A versus A, yes, they're the same. So go and check, you know, D. And so on. What is the base case? What is the, the easiest? Case? Can you tell me without any, you know, if statements or anything? If I give you, a, you know, a string of what property will you be able to tell immediately uh, that it is palindrome? There are two, one letter exactly, or if length is one, excellent. Or of course, it's an empty string. An empty string is also uh, a palindrome. Yeah. Zero or one, the length is zero or one, exactly. Okay, so let's see the code. Actually, let me. Okay, uh, voila, yeah. So here's the code, I'm saying the following. This is the function called palindrome that takes a string as argument. It checks whether the length of the string is less than two. So as you guys said, one or zero. And if it's less than two, so I, one character or an empty string, I return true immediately because this is a palindrome. A string with one character is read from left to right as from right to left. Excellent. So this is the, the base case. Now, what is the recursive step? The recursive step is this. I'm gonna go and check. Now, okay, if you have a string whose a length is greater than two, so three or more characters. Check the first and the last characters. Are they the same? Okay, so if that's the case, you're gonna have this true. 
okay? And then you call the function recursively again on right, the substring from you know, the second character all the way till the end before one, okay? So the minus one means till the end before one. Okay, so I slice the string. Okay, great. If this was false, it will immediately return false because you don't need this act, right? If false and any and true or false is gonna be false. So it's gonna always return false immediately. Okay. Questions. Are you hitting well? There is no lag. Can you tell me? Okay, so should it break the loop if it is not equal though? There's no loop. What loop? So I recur, recur, right? So it's gonna say, okay, I know, right? I'm here in this function. Let's say I give it ABBA, okay? Or ABC, it's gonna go here, ABC, it's length, it, is not less than two, so it's gonna go into the else. It's gonna check, is A the same as C, right? It's not, this is false, just immediately returns false because you know false and anything would be false. So if this was or, for instance, it would have had to continue with the recursive form, okay? Other questions? Let's run it. Python, uh, yeah, Python, uh, run the py. I assume it takes as an input a string. Let's see. So it return, I give it ABBA and it returns true. Let's try with another thing. Adam, it also gives me true. I'm gonna try it with a, B, C, D, E, and should give me false. It wouldn't call pal again because, right, the semantics of Python is, you know, when you have a logical expression, uh, you, you, if you do shortcuts. So if you have false and something, it doesn't need to, uh, to uh, continue with the, uh, with the expression. Even if it calls it, it will keep adding, right? So you're adding this, you have right, to return false and you can call this function, it, assume that it calls it, right, with ABC. Yeah, so assume you have ABC as the input. It doesn't matter even if it calls the function. It will check A is not the same as C. So it's gonna give this false. And then call pal on B, right, alone. B is, its length is less than two, so it's gonna return true. And then the final call, right, would be false and true, which is false. So it doesn't matter whether it solves it or not. Most likely, right, in Python, it, if it sees a logical expression and knows one of them is false and it's an act, it immediately stops. Yeah, false and, and true, that's exactly what I'm saying, right? False and true is false. Yeah, refresh your memory on uh, logical expression, please. Other questions? Okay, let's go back to the running again. I wanna check if you're following or not. Okay, clear and do the following. I'm gonna run the function and I'm gonna give it math. What do you expect it to return? True or false? I repeated Christina, but give, let's let's answer this question first. So if I give, if I run the uh, Ali is saying true, right? So if I give it Madame, uppercase M and lowercase M at the end. Okay, so Ali is saying true. The rest are saying false. So at least the people participate. Okay, let's try it out and then see why. And it gives me false. Why false? Yeah. Okay, because here I'm doing 
M uppercase is not equal to M lowercase. If you want it to work for, you know, case and sense, to be case insensitive, you have to do, for instance, is lower of S zero equal equal is lower of S of minus one. Yeah, so do some, some uh, first normalization before you work. Okay, Christina, what is the question? So you're saying, can you repeat the second part of the ELSA statement? Okay, so here's the second part. I have an S. Let's say, you know, S is equal to A, B, C, D. Uh, professor, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know what? Can you please elaborate? You don't know what? Lagging? Now, is it better? Yeah. I'm, this thing is driving you crazy. The AUB is gonna, you know, uh, I don't know, not AUB, but the AUB internet connection. So sometimes it's better if I'm on the DSL, sometimes it's better if I'm on the Wi-Fi. I don't know what to do. So I now like disconnected the, uh, like the DSL and I hope now it's better. So now we're on the Wi-Fi. Let me know if uh, there are any problems. So again, back to Christina's question. She's asking about the second part of uh, of the uh, of the else statement. So let's assume I give it this string, Christina, A, B, C, D. Obviously, this is not the base case because the length is greater than two. So it's gonna go here. Check is A. We're gonna check is A equal to B to D. No, so that would be false. And then it calls the function again on the string. Right? So it's going to call pal with input as bc. That's slicing from the beginning all the way till the end before minus one. And now it receives again, it opens another scope for this function. It only sees b and c. Okay. If the lengths of b and c less than two, no. So it's going to go and check here. Right? So it will check b and c. You know, B is not equal to C, so it's going to return false. If that's, you know, if, if it doesn't automatically pick on the fact that it already returned the false. Yeah, so if it, so if it hasn't already picked on the fact that it returned false here, it will continue calling the function until it hits the base case. Either way, it's going to keep track. Yeah, it keeps slicing and checking until it hits the base case. Yeah, it might return earlier if it finds a false at some point, because I know false and anything, whether true or false is gonna be false. So it might immediately return, but even if it continue until it hits the base case, it's it's gonna always eventually return false because you keep accumulating one false after another, after another and so on. Yeah? Again, try to you know draw on a piece of paper or trace it by drawing these uh, you know scopes. So assume, you know, give it an input and see what happens, you know, when you open the first F scope, you open the second F scope and so on, and then trace back the return back to see, you know, in the cases when you give it a palindrome versus when you don't give it a palindrome. All right? Okay, great. Yeah. So uh, are you still having issues with the internet connection? Or it's better now. Okay. Okay, great. Let's do another exercise. So this thing is called Towers of Hanoi. It's one of our favorite things in computer science. So we really like this uh, problem and this example. So what is this Towers of Hanoi? I'll give you a little bit of a background about the problem first, and then we'll see why it relates to recursion. Okay. So check this out. I have, um, I'll show you first before why is it called towers of Hanoi? What, is, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to do the following. We have three poles, three towers, and we have disks of various sizes, as you see here. So, you know, a large disk, you know, and then smaller and smaller and smaller. And we have them stacked in one tower, let's say tower A, and we want to move them to tower C. 
Okay, so that's the game we're trying to play. We want to move all of these disks to tower C. We're allowed to move only one disk at a time. So we can't just take all of them and put them in C. Otherwise, there's no game. So the first, uh, you know, um, issue or the first restriction that we have is that we can move only one disk at a time. The second issue is that I cannot place a small disk, uh, a large disk on top of a small disk. So I can, you know, place this disk on top of this, but not the other way around. Okay, let's play the game and then I'll tell you why it's called Towers of Hanoi. So I'm gonna, I hope this still works. Okay, very good. All right, so let's play the game together. So here you have the game, I have three lists. And I wanna... Okay. The baby Okay, so I have a disc, like three discs here, and I want to move them from uh, here to here. And the question is, right, I want to do this in the minimum number of moves. So you win the game, if you get, you, you do it in the minimum number of moves. Because I could, you know, keep trying things. I could do this, and then I could move this on top of it. Of course, I can't, because this is larger than the small one. Yeah, so I can do this. So I can move this here and move this here, you know, and move this here. And it's counting how many moves I'm doing, right? Eventually I want to move them and they were, yeah, so basically like this, but on the uh, third uh, tower, yeah, on tower three. And, and I want to do it at the minimum moves possible. Okay, so tell me, what do I do? What is my first step? I have no, no choice but to move this guy, but where? Move it to the second or the third, in your opinion? Move it to the third. The third. Third, okay. So let's yes, then, yeah. then the middle one. one. And then? The middle one move to the second. Okay, middle move to the second, that's two moves. Yes, then put the one over the second. This one? Like this, okay. Yeah. Then take the large, the third. Okay. Put it here. Okay. And put the put the little one on the first. Put the little one. And then. On the first. Okay. This is obvious. And now I do this. Okay. Yes. That's six moves. And now I do this. That's seven. Well done. However, that was I I I didn't see the whole time. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. I could of course have moved it in you know, more moves as I figured it out, but uh, the minimum really you can do with three uh, discs is seven moves. That's the least you can do. Perfect. Okay, let's make it more challenging. We'll do it with four discs. Huh. Any thoughts? The minimum moves should be 15. So I should do this in 15 moves uh, to win the game. What is the first step? What should I do? Move this here or there? Uh, anywhere, doesn't matter now. Doesn't matter, okay, let's try. So I move it here. This? Uh, just one question, do we need to put on C or on B? I wanna move them eventually to C, to tower, tower C, yeah, at the end. You know, it's better to put it on. Okay, I'll start. You're saying here, put it here? Yeah. Okay, then? And we put the second one on B. Okay, so put the second on B, then? C to B. This guy to B, okay. A to C. Okay. Uh, B to A. This guy to A, okay. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, this guy here? B to C. Yeah, okay. A to... Mm -hmm. Here or here? Let's try it. Uh, I think we could do it here, okay? It would matter, I think, if we put it on B for... Put it on B, I'm stuck, right? If I put it here, 
I don't know. I can't. No, 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 not the. Yeah, I this, was talking yeah, about yeah, this one. First right. move. Okay, let's try. Let's finish this one, right? We can still solve it with this one. So I have done eight moves. Okay. Yeah. Now what do I do next? A to A. Uh, okay. Any other choice? But to do this and then like this, right? Very stuck, right? Maybe you should have moved it here. Okay. Yes, and B to A. But then we're not B to B to A. A. Yeah, we're not like this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then I can move this here. Right, and then move this here, and move this here. I've done already 15 moves, but I haven't, or 16 moves, but I haven't really solved the problem. I, I wanted to move all of these guys to tower, uh, to tower um, uh, C, not B, right? So I have to continue like this. Let's do it like this. So here is, here is a simulation of how we solve it. Okay, I'm gonna restart it and try to solve it myself. So this, I move this here, I move this here, I move this here, I move this here, okay? And then I move this here, I move this here, I move this here, okay? Then I can move this guy here. And then I repeat the same procedure on these three. I have to move these three. It's as if the smaller problem. I have to move these three guys from this tower to this tower using this tower as spare. So what do I do? I believe I should move it C. to C. And then move yeah. this guy here. Then move this guy here. That's 11 moves. 12, 13. 14 and 15. Okay, well done. Excellent. No, you didn't miss anything, uh, Robert. We're still trying to solve the same problem. So why is this related to recursion? Let me show you, right? So what I did for solving the problem with three was four is the following. I moved these three guys. I want to move these four here, eventually here. So what I did is I solved the problem to move these three guys. If I, here's how I break the algorithm. I'm gonna move the top three guys to this one. So as if I have a smaller version of the problem, I have three, three disks only, and I wanna move them to B rather than C, okay? So I solved this problem, moving these three guys to this, and the minimum number of moves. We've already seen how to do this uh, right now. Okay, so now I have moved these guys, let's say, like this, like this, uh, like this, like this, and then what? Uh, yeah, let me restart. Just like this. Mm -hmm. So here I'm solving it for the case of three. So I, I solved the smaller problem of the version. I had four disks I wanted to move. I solved it, moved three of them, not to the target tower, but to the spare tower. Okay. And now, what is the next step? If I have, if I reach this far in the solution, what is the next step? Who can tell me? Just move this guy all the way over here. Okay. So solve the problem. You give it for this, solve it for three. But make sure you put them in the spare. Move the last disk you know, to the target. And then this is again solve the same problem, moving from this spare to the target using the from tab. So it's really doing right two things, two recursive things and one base case. Exactly. Okay. And you can try it for five, it becomes even more difficult. You can try it for six and so on. Yeah. Okay.
So before we get into the solution again and explain it, I'll tell you why is it called Towers of Hanoi. So it has a story or a myth behind it that there are monks in Hanoi, which is the capital of, who knows what Hanoi is, well, Hanoi is where, in which country? Anybody knows? Vietnam, yes. Okay, so Hanoi, so the, there are monks in Hanoi, in some, uh, you know, temple or something like this, and they, they, this temple has three towers, and they're moving a stack of 64 gold discs. So I assume these guys are 64, and they are uh, gold, okay? And they want to move them from tower A to tower C, uh, using B as pair. And they can only move one disc a day, and a larger disc cannot be placed on top of a smaller one, as we agree. Okay, so only they can move only one disc a day. And they want to finish the, this task as soon as possible. So really, that's why we care about the minimum number of movements. We want to help them figure out how to do this so that they, they use the least am amount of days possible. Yeah, and why they want to do this? Because they want to end the world. So once they succeed in moving these disks, the world will end. That's the main, okay? So we have 64 disks. They can move, you know, a disk one day at a time. Their goal is to move them all of, all of them in the same shape like this, put them here and see, and they want to finish as soon as possible. We'll see how long it will take them in a bit. Okay, so why is this rated triggers? Let's say I want to write a program that tells these monks the steps to do. In other words, right? I want to tell them, you know, that it, that it takes the number of this, which is 64. I tell them, you know, move from A to B. Okay, what, is, what does that mean? It means take whatever is on top of A, put it on B. And then I want to say move from C, A to C. So take whatever is on top of A and put it on C. And then move from C to B. Whatever is on top of C, move it to B. So I want to give them, you know, the instructions. Following the rules of the, of the, of the game, of course, that I cannot put a desk, uh, you know, a larger desk on top of a smaller desk. So the, these instructions will take into consideration uh, that. Okay, so how do I solve this problem? How do I write this algorithm? Think recursively. Here's how I solve it. I have, you know, n disks as input, so the n is in our example 64. I'm gonna solve this problem by saying the following. I solve the problem. Uh, so, so let me annotate a little bit. Let's say I have the following. I'm gonna write a function called Hanoi or H that takes number of disks as input. Okay. And you know, what are the let me clear. So it's going to take, so H is a function, and it's going to take N, the number of disks, the two, which tower, you know, I'm moving from originally, which tower I'm moving, or sorry, from, right, so F, and then which tower I want to target, and which tower is this pair. Okay, let's assume the function is like, okay, as a simple input or an example input, I can give it 64. So I have 64 disks, and they are from tower A. So I want to move them to tower C using B as pair. Okay, so that's how the function looks like. And the function should tell me, you know, move from A to B, then move from C to A, and so on. Right? Give me the instructions or the steps. So here's how I'm going to solve the problem recursively. I'm going to say the following: If I give, if you give me n disks and I want to move, I'm going to move. The first n minus one disks. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna move the first n minus one disks if you go here. So solving the problem. I'm gonna just say assume I wanna move these guys. I'm gonna move these n minus one disks, how I've solved the problem, from A to B, okay? And now that's the first step. And now I have this one last disk, I'm gonna move it to C, and then I'll solve the same problem again. Now I have these guys all in B, move them to C using A as well. And so I solve the problem recursively this way. 
Okay. So basically, again, so move top n minus one disk from tower A to tower B using tower C as pair. Then move solve the basic problem, which is moving a large disk from tower A to tower C. That's my base case. If I have one disk, it's very simple to solve the problem. Just move it directly to the target from the from to the to. Okay, from A to C. And then now I have a second recursive call, which is moving the n minus one disk because they now are on, on tower B and I want to move them to tower C. So we know solve the same problem again on this n minus one disk by moving them from tower B to tower C using tower A as a spit. Okay. Let's see the code. Is there a case where there are only two towers? No, the, the, there are versions, different versions with different number of towers, with different number of uh, criteria. So I think there is one which is four, and there is no closed form solution for it. In the sense, you cannot really, here if you see the simulation, it tells you the minimum number of moves. There is a formula for computing this. Yeah, you give it n, and it's a, you know, it uses a, something like a geometric sequence, and it can estimate the exact number of moves. If you have four towers, I think nobody has a closed form solution. So you cannot really figure out what is the minimum number of moves. But for three, we know. For two, uh, it's, it's impossible, yeah? Because you, you don't have something to spare to put on it. Right, Ali? You need at least one, at least one spare to be able to you know, move things before. Otherwise, from here to here only, you'll never be able to do it. Yeah? Because you do this, and then you have no other choice but to do this. Yeah? There's nothing else you can do. Okay. All right. So let's see the code. Here's the function. I'm calling it towers. And it takes three parameters. N, from, to, and spare. Okay. So what is it doing? It's saying, okay, you know, this is the number of disks. This is the target, the, 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 the source tower that I'm moving a disk from uh, to the, you know, target tower, like C, for instance, and the spare at the tower, the empty tower that I'm going to use as spare. OK, what is the base case? When n is equal to what? One disk, which means when n is equal. Yeah. When n is equal to one, right? So if n is equal to one, like here, if I say, you know, I don't, I, yeah, they don't have in the simulation one because it's straight, yeah? So if n is equal to one, all I have to do is say print move from the, you know, tower from to tower two, that's it, yeah? So if n was equal to one, I have one disk only. Imagine you here, I have only one disk, yeah, the large one, and I want to move it to C. I need only one move. I move from A to C. Okay, so that's the base case. Else, so the recursive step, I have three steps that I need to do. You have n disks, you want to move n minus one to the spare, starting from from, and then you know, move the last disk to the two, and then move the n minus one disks from the spare to the two. Okay, so it's really Three, two recursive codes. Towers, it is n minus one. I'm calling you know the towers, the same function recursively, but with the smaller input. N minus one disk. I'll focus only on the top n minus one disks. Where do I want to move them? I want to move them from the from because that's where they started to the spare rather than to the target, right? To B, tower B, not tower C. Okay, so if I annotate this and n is equal to 64. This is A. I want to move all them to C, and my spare is B. Okay, it's going to do the following. Move the top 63 from A to B, right? and you C as a spare, yeah? to kind of use it in the way until you move the 60 disks from A to B. Okay, now I have one disk left. What do I do with it? I just move it from, now it's on the from, right, to the two, using spare 
as despair. I don't need despair, but because the function takes four arguments, I have to specify. So now it will move, you know, the tower, right? The last, the last disk from from A to C using B as pair. Okay. So that's the base case because I'm calling the function with n equal to one, it will go here and it's gonna say print move from one, from A, sorry, to uh, C, okay? That's what it's going to do. And then I have solved the problem. I have solved two parts of the problem. Now the last part is the fun. To move back the N minus one towers. Yeah, so now I have the N minus one towers. They are on the spare, so that's their front. So they are on B, okay, so they are on B. So I'm gonna move them from B to C because that's where I wanna put them. And I'm gonna use A as, okay. More or less get the intuition. This is mostly the most difficult probably example and recursion that we've seen so far. The intuition is clear or not? Let's try to run it, see the output, and then I'll, uh, we can discuss. I know it's clear. And then let's do the following. Annoying, maybe. Let me show you the code just to convince you that it's exactly the same code. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna remove this. We don't need this for now. Or let me, yeah. Let's make another copy. Just delete this. We'll talk about this later, this global and stuff. We'll talk about them later, okay? So here's the code exactly as in the slides, right? So I give it, you know, a uh, number here. Let's say, let's start with three, with one, base case. Okay. What should it do if I give it just one and run this code? Can you somebody tell me? So if I call towers and is equal to one, I want to move from A to C and I'm using B as pair. What should it print? Prints move from A to C because I have only one disk and I want to move it from A to C. That's just one move. Exactly. So let's try it then. Then I say move from A to C. Okay. If I have two disks, imagine, right? A disk, a large disk, and on top of it, one that is a little bit smaller, like this. I have something like this, and on top of it, like this. And they are on tower A. Right, tower B is empty and tower C is empty. What do I do? What is, what is, what is really, if you solve it without the, the code and let's then verify whether the code is doing the same thing. So if I solve it without the code, I wanna do this in the minimum number of movements. What is the best thing to do? How do I move these two disks onto C with the minimum number of movements? and I can move one disk only at a time. I move from A to B, okay? So the first thing is A to B, okay? That's the first thing. And then, then the large one to C, okay? So now I have the smaller one here and the larger one here. So I move from B, from A to C, okay? And then, from B to C, as uh, as uh, right Ali and Mahdi are saying, from B to C, okay. So that's what I expect the program to run. Okay. But let's see why this is the case. And let's run it first to verify this, and then uh, we'll see why.
And as you guys say, see here, it's exactly written as from move from A to B, move from A to C, and then move from B to C. So it's exactly that as we guys uh, expect. Why? Because of the form. I have n equal to two. So we'll get here, you know, n is equal to two. Okay, I have from is A, this is C, and this is B. Okay, so it's gonna get here. Is this the base case? No. Then it's gonna solve call itself again with towers of n minus one. That's one. Where's the from? It's A. Okay. Where's the spare? It's B. And what is the two? It's C. Okay. So now it's gonna say, okay, solve the first this problem on a smaller version, just this disk, and you wanna move it from A to B using C as spare. So that tells you what? That's a base case. So we're gonna move from a to right is uh, B. You, uh, that's it, right? So it's gonna say move from A to B, and then it's gonna solve this one, right? Towers of one A to C using B as pair. So it's gonna say that's another base case. So it's gonna say move A to C, and then finally I'm calling it again for this guy, the smaller one. So it's gonna say one. And the from is B, the target is C, and the spare is A. So it's gonna say, okay, move from B to C because it's again a base case. Try this out, you know, try this uh, tracing to understand the, how the code runs uh, at home, please. Let's try it with three. Okay. And this is what it does moves from A to C, then from A to B, then from C to B. That's exactly the eight moves we've done. Yeah? If you remember here, we had A to, so what is the algorithm? Let's see what the algorithm, what the output is telling us and follow it to see if it's working. How do I do the both of them at the same time? Yeah, here. Got, okay. So I'm gonna say it says from A to C. So this guy, move it to C. Then from A to B. So here, from this to this, okay? And then from C to B. So it's telling me move this guy to this guy. It's telling the monks to do the following, right? All they have to do is follow. From C to B, from A to C. So this guy, move it all the way here, okay? And then from B to A. So this is B can only move that one on top to A. Okay, great. And then it tells me from B to C. So this guy here. And then the last step is from A to C. It's working perfectly fine and it gives me exactly. Yeah. Let's try it for four. Sorry, I did the exact same thing. Not taking a commandment arguments, so four. Okay. If you count these guys, these should be 50. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, you can do it. Okay, one last thing. So we, the, the monks, the problem, the Towers of Hanoi says there are 64 disks. Yeah. So let's see how many moves or how many lines the monks have to do. In other words, how many days since they're moving a disk uh, on uh, per day, just one disk per day. So how many days do they need to move these to 64 uh, gold disks from tower A to tower C? And when will the world end? Let's try this out. Yeah, so I just run the input with 64. Okay, did I save? Yes, let me clear and run it. Okay. What are you noticing? Are you seeing what ha what's happening? What's go what's going on? So if I have sixty four disks, how many movements? You know, the minimum number of movements I need is how much? It's not going to finish, basically. Yeah, it's it's not infinity. 
It's a very, very large number. The, the program will keep running. The monks will keep moving. They will die. We will die. You know, your great, great, great grandchildren will die, and they're still moving. You know, that is. So just for a small number at 64, this the minimum number of movements is huge. We'll try to analyze this later, maybe next uh, next month, to see to get a formula for this. But if you want to know the exact number, the minimum number of moves for uh, one second, how do I do this? How do I hide this? Escape. Okay, so if you know, like, if you want to look at the number of moves, it's exactly around 18 billion, right? Or not 18 billion, this huge number, right? This is the minimum number of days or the minimum number of moves that are required to uh, get you uh, to move 64 disks. If you're doing a one move at a day, then you would need around 500 billion years. Yeah, so the world would definitely end most likely. And uh, for other reasons, before before the guys are done, okay. Questions, uh, Professor? And how yeah. we are moving from A to C as the final part, right? Yeah, we're moving them from A to C. That's the goal. If we were to move it from A to B, would the goal uh, would the code change? No, you just have to specify the first goal, right? So here, you just have to say, you know, I want to move sixty four discs from A. To be using CSP, right? All you have to do is change. So it's very flexible, the code. Okay. The number of disks, it takes what's the target, where's the source. Related to binary counting, it has something to do with counting. Yes, it's really counting. We'll, we'll do some counting and try to write this, you know, as uh, a, a recurrence relation and solve it. Uh, okay. Other questions? Okay, great. Try this out. I have one last example for you. I thought it was pretty funny. I'm not sure whether you'll find it funny too or not. But here is your last you know, example of recursion. I thought this, I saw this yesterday and I thought it was very recursive. So really it's a, another example of a recursive algorithm. Yeah, the, it seems the Lebanese regime is using recursion to kind of try to solve their problems. Yeah, so just a small geeky joke. Don't take it political. And, you know, I respect all political sides and all political views. I'm just saying that I feel this is very uh, recursive in my opinion. Okay, guys, please solve the assignment. There are a couple of questions that are a little bit uh, difficult. One involves loops and recursion. That's, I think, the, uh, the, the that. And one that involves, you know, recursion that doesn't end right away. So, it's, you know, you have a recursive call and then you do something after all the recursion are done. That's the last question. I think the most difficult question in the assignment is the last question. Okay, uh, we're done. I'll stop recording and we can, I, I can stay a little bit and take questions if you have any. Stop.